Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can performantly do bullets without having to do full on prediction. Now, what we're gonna be doing is actually in the essentials, a bit like prediction works. Not entirely, but it gets the idea. And once I make a video on prediction, you'll understand what I mean. So first of all, just the project that I've set up is just this simple top down character. I can just run around and jump, which is the one from the animation tutorial, but he does nothing else. There's no other scripts on him, nothing like that. So let's get right into it. So the first thing that we do is we just go into scripts and we make our script. I'm just gonna call this one, I don't know, performant shoot, so I know what it is. Let's make that script, attach it to the player, and let's enter the script. So in the script, let's just set up the basics from the beginning. So let me remove this, and let's make the script a network behavior, which of course requires that we derive from fishnet.object. And now this is actually all that we're gonna be needing. We don't need to derive from anything else in order for this to work. So let's first of all look at what we need. The first thing that we need is we need the bullet prefab. So I'm just gonna make a new reference to the bullet prefab. So we can always just make that bullet. And then we're also going to be needing the speed at which the bullet will be traveling. And these are really all the parameters that we need. We can calculate everything that we need from just the speed and the start position. But I'm going to go over that in a bit. So let's go into the update loop. Because this is obviously where we're just going to be doing our input management. If you're going to be doing it from anywhere else, that's perfect. But the thing is, we don't want to disable this script right off the bat. We want to do calculations in here. Now you can also do the calculations on the bullet themselves. But I always like to keep as little classes in the world as possible. So doing the calculations from here is good and i'm going to show you that in a bit as well so let's do the classic if we are the owner check and if we're not the owner we just return that way we can put anything here that everyone runs and we can put everything here that only the owner runs so the input check is what the owner's got to be running so we can do the input dot get key down we can just do key code dot mouse zero which is your left mouse button and then we can run some kind of shoot command so like that and let's just go on and make that so i'm just going to make a private void shoot and this is where we're going to set up the position and direction of the shot and then we're going to tell everyone that we, hey i've shot the bullet so let's start by defining a vector three which is going to be our start position for the bullet now in my case i can just hard define it you can also set up a transform or do whichever that you like for my sake i know that if i just go into unity i know that if i go into my character well his starting point is down here by his feet so what i want to do is just move up one and move out in front of him and i want the bullet to spawn out here so i can just do that through code by just taking his transform dot position which is what was at his feet and then just add the transform dot forward to make it in front of him times that with 0.5 to make it not that far in front of him and then i can just add the transform dot up as well and there we go now what we've done is we've moved out one unit then moved back half a unit so we've only moved out half a unit and then moved up one unit and so he's going to fire from here so now that we have the starting position we also want the direction of the bullet in our case the direction is just going to be our transform dot forward but just to make it simple i'm just gonna make a direction variable you could just skip this and go straight to using this one that's what i probably normally would do but again you might want a different direction or something like that if you want to calculate you know multiple bullets that shoot out a fan or whatever we want a directional vector and then all we got to do is we got to tell the server to spawn the bullet but we also got to spawn the bullet locally so the nifty thing here is the bullet's not going to be a network object that's one of the reasons why this is performant is we are not actually spawning the bullet everybody's just instantiating their own version of it locally so every screen has a representation of it which we can then use the calculations of when do we send this information to calculate where is the bullet exactly in time to have it be the same on every screen so the, these bullets are going to be on the exact same position on the screen at all times which is extremely nifty very performant very lightweight so this is why i would normally use such a system for you know if i had to spawn physical bullets and shoot so let's start by doing the local shoot i'm going to do a private void spawn bullet local just so we are well aware what this is and we're just going to take in our vector 3 of the start position and the vector 3 of the direction just to keep it simple we send this through so we can now call spawn bullet local send in the start position and send in the direction and now we have this information in here what we can now do is we can just take the game object of bullet and just instantiate it now i'm not going to set a rotation because our bullet is just going to be perfectly round now what we also got to do is we got to figure out how does the bullet move so the way that we're going to do this is we're going to make a list of all our bullets so we can just make a private list that's going to be of our bullets now this could just be of our game object bullet but we might want to keep track of different things in here so what i'm going to do instead is we're going to make a class private class that's just only relevant for this performance shoot that's yes and we're going to call this performant bullet and well all the data we want to keep track of for now is just the transform of the bullet because we don't even need the game object we just need the transform which we can just call bullet transform and then we also need the direction at which it should fly like so and let's just keep this capitalized as well and now we can keep track of a list of these performant bullets so this is going to be all the bullets that we've spawned and we can just call this underscore spawned bullets and just set that to be a new list already like so and now when we 
spawn the bullet down here, we then want to populate this list or add to this list. So I can say spawn bullets dot add. And then, you know, we can't just add the bullet. We got to make a performant bullet. So we can say new performant bullet. And then here it's going to have the bullet transform, which is equal to the bullet dot transform. And it's going to have the direction, which is equal to the direction that we sent through as well. And there we go. Now we've just populated it. We can also, if it makes it easier for you to look at, we could also say performant bullet. Uh, let's just call it spawned bullet is equals to and then do the same line. It's the exact same thing and then input the spawn bullet in here. I just think it's clean as so just keep it in one line. But just be well aware that you can do this with custom classes as well, which I think is very, very nifty. So now that we have this, what we got to do in the update loop for everyone is that we want to iterate through all of the bullets and move them in their direction at the given speed. So this is actually rather simple. What we can just say is for each of these spawned bullets, and I'm just going to call this bullet, we want to move this forward. So we can say bullet dot bullet transform dot position, and then we just move it forward. You can also use, you know, I don't know, a character control on the bullet or ready body or whatever you'd like to do and add that force from the beginning. That's also very possible. I'm just going to move it at a constant speed. So it's easier for you guys to see that they perfectly line up. I'm going to grab the bullet dot direction. I'm going to time start with time dot delta time. And then we're going to time start with our bullet speed. And there we go. Now the bullets are going to move forward as well. I can actually remove these to just keep it even cleaner. And the thing is, everybody now, everybody runs this code. Even if it's your character, everybody runs this because it's before the is owner check. So that means that right now we're only instantiating them locally, which means you are going to be the only one seeing your bullets and they are going to move for you because you also execute this code. However, when we then also instantiate it for everybody else, they will also add their local instance to this list. So this list is basically a local list that's a representation of the bullet that you see on your screen. I hope that makes sense. So let's just go and first of all, test this out now. So let's add the bullet and I've already set up the bullet. It's really just a red ball. And as you can see, it has nothing on it. It has a collider. That's a trigger. Wouldn't even need that technically. And then it just has the mesh render stuff. So this is just like a sphere that's red and I've just scaled it down. That's all it is. There's no shenanigans, no network objects, no nothing. It's completely local. And let's just put a speed of three, for example. So it shoots rather slowly, but so we can see it. I'm just going to save this and let's go and try play it. As you can see now, I can run around. And if I shoot, you can see it spawns the bullet and it's just going to move forward at a slow pace. So now this works and we're making the bullets move without them even having a script on them, which I think is awesome. That just makes it even more performant. Of course, as soon as we want to do collision detection and so on, it's going to be the best to just have a script on them. So as you can see how I can go over here, I can shoot, but obviously the other players are not going to see the bullets because we've not set it up to send to everybody yet. So let's go and do that. So now at the same time as spawning this locally, we also need to send to everybody saying, hey, I want to shoot. So how we're going to do that is we're going to set up a server RPC. That that will require ownership. So we'll just keep it standard like that, make it a private void and say spawn bullet. And then we also need an op servers RPC. That's everybody taking in. And on this one, it's important that we say exclude the owner because as we did up here, we spawn that bullet locally. So he does not need to do that. So we say exclude owner true. And we can make a private void spawn bullet server like so and we can call the spawn bullet up server from in here now we need to take in a few parameters here we need to take in the vector three of the start position we need to take in the vector three of the direction just as we did earlier and then we also need to take in what's called the uint of the start tick now this is part of fishnet's tick system ticks are synchronized across everybody which means that this is a unit of time that we can use across every screen and this is how what we're going to do to calculate where is the bullet in time so the op server is going to take in the exact same data like so and we're just going to send it in here now let me just go over with you really quickly if I just try and draw it out. So let's say that on both screens, the player is standing right here and he fires his ball, which is, you know, he spawns it here and it flies this way. But now when everybody else received that message, the ball for him will be over here and then they will spawn the ball over here. And that's obviously an issue because then they're going to move out of sync. So on our screen, it's here and on everybody else's screen, it's going to be here or depending on when they receive the data, that can be different for everybody. But what we then can do is by taking the time into account, we can can then say, okay, how long are we taking the time and this movement speed of the ball into account? We can then calculate, okay, how far over this given amount of time that it took me to receive the data. So we send through the tick at which when we sent the data, and then they can line that up against the tick that they have on their side saying, okay, this is the ticket which he sent it. This is the ticket which I received it. So how long time has passed since this? So how far should I move? Because if you have a look at the movement calculation up here, you can see the direction is a normalized vector, which means that 
that's always one in any direction. It's going to be one no matter which direction it flies. It's going to be one. And time the delta time means over one second. So this means it moves one unit over one second. And our bullet speed in this case is three. It means it will move three units each second. And that's how we can calculate using this time variable as well is we can say, okay, how much of a second has passed? Let's say it's 0 0.5 seconds. Then in our case, we know we need to move half of three units, which is 1.5 units ahead. So it'll sort of move ahead, skip up here. So if the blue one is when we receive the data, it'll be here and then calculate, whoops, this is not where I need to be. I need to be half a second ahead in time, which is right here. And then they will both start moving ahead and they should be completely synchronized for everybody. So it should be very, very fast. So let me take you through how we do this. First of all, let's try and find the time difference. So we set up a float that I just call time difference. And here we need to use what's called the time manager dot tick. That's our current tick time. And then from that, we can subtract the starting tick. This means that, you know, if the starting tick is, let's say, tick 126 and our current tick is 130, that means that there's a four tick difference, which is what we can use to calculate time. And now, as you've probably heard before with multiplayer games as well, there's something called a tick rate. That's how many ticks is on a second. And this is how we can calculate the actual time difference. So we can say from standard, Fishnet has a tick rate of 30. You can actually change and manipulate this tick rate as you wish. It shouldn't make a difference for this system because we're going to take it into account that it's a fluid or a dynamic variable. But if you go onto your network manager, it will be added automatically at runtime. But you can actually add the time manager and here you can change what tick rate that you're running at. Now, keep in mind, the higher the tick rate, the more data is going to be sent and the heavier it's going to be for, you know, the server and the connection. So 30 is good for most cases, unless you have a really fast paced shooter game, you might want to go to 60 or maybe even higher. So we can now use this time manager. So first of all, we got to find this difference, which we can just do by putting these brackets. And now we have the difference. And then we can divide this by the time manager dot tick rate, which is how many ticks that we have a second. And just to be sure, we want to cast this to a float. Now this is casting is generally not the best thing to do, but it's because ticks are units and we actually want the difference in floats. So this is why we cast these calculations into floats. By dividing, it will already, as far as I'm aware, turn into a float. So this should work just fine. And now we should get the time difference at how long it took to receive the data. And we can actually debug this. I think this stuff is kind of fun. So if I just do this and we say time to receive bullet, bullet fired command, and then we can just throw in the time difference. Now it will actually give us a difference in seconds of how long did it take to send the data. So we just got up here, also run the spawn bullet command. Whoops, spawn bullet. I'm going to give it the start position. I'm going to give it the direction. And we're going to give it the time manager dot tick. So this tick is going to be when we send it. And this tick is going to be when we receive it because this is on the receiving end. So let's go and try this. So as you see, if I just shoot here, I'll get nothing in the console because it's about who receives the data. So if I start this other one now and I shoot, you can see it says that it took 0 0.133 seconds to receive the data. And this is probably going to be a constant. But you can also see if I then go on to the network manager and I add a fake latency to this. So let's just add very, very large latency. You can see the ping count up here will go up. And if I shoot, you can see now it takes much longer to receive the command 0 0.73, 0 0.77, 0 0.666. You can see now it takes longer to receive the data, but it still makes up for it. We know what the time difference is, and that's the useful key here. So from this, we can now calculate a spawn position. So vector three spawn position is equals two. And what we're going to do is we take the start position into account. We then times that with the direction, which if you remember, that's a normalized vector we're sending through and then times that with the bullet speed. Now we have how far we move in a second. So this right here in with our current variables is going to turn out to three in a given direction. And then we can just times that with the time difference. And it's that simple. Oh, and I'm terribly sorry, the, the start position, of course, got to be added. So start position added with the direction, bullet speed and time difference. So let's just again say our time difference is half a second. Well, if this is, turns out to be three, then it's going to be 1.5 in whatever direction from the starting position. So I hope this makes sense, but let's try it out. Now let's try and spawn the bullet. I'm going to do game object dot bullet equals to instantiate and then of course it's going to be the bullet prefab it's going to be at the start position uh, not sp start position sorry it's going to be at the spawn position and it's going to be with quaternion dot identity like so and the last thing that we got to do is just add it to that list as well so we can go into the spawn bullets dot add and we can actually just do the exact same as we do up here add new perform bullet bullet so on and here we go this should actually just work it's as simple as this if you would look at that we have 65 lines of code in the entire script and now we have what basically works as prediction and the part that works but like like prediction is the fact that we actually take the time manager tick rate or ticks into account, which means we're accounting for the difference in time and then doing the calculations locally.
locally. This is the same idea that prediction uses, is that all the calculations are done locally. We just try and make up for the time difference. Of course, there's a lot more to it. Don't, don't misunderstand me. It is very difficult. But if you look at this, and if we now shoot, and as you can see, the bullet actually now shows up a little further ahead. You might be able to notice that. And that's because it's making up for that time difference. Now, if I go into the network manager and I add some fake latency again, you'll see that the bullet will actually show up very, very far in front. But it is in front nonetheless, which is what makes up for it. So you can see it is the bullet is, you know, taken into account that it is slower. And this means that the bullets are now exactly where they're supposed to be on the network, which means without having to use prediction, you could technically do a competitive type system with this. Of course, there's still some movement issues and so on that prediction can make up for. Don't get me wrong. Prediction is better for competitive play. However, I'm just trying to show you that it's very possible without having to go to prediction to actually make things performant and fast and interactive. So I really hope that this was useful. I hope you learned something new. Please do leave a like, a comment and subscribe. And then yeah, I just hope that you have a wonderful day.